Biblical foundations for a Christian marriage. Biblical foundations for a Christian marriage. And uh, if you see any equipment, it comes with a manual. And everything that you see has a creator and a designer. One of the biggest problems we have in the world today is that the secular world is trying to redefine what marriage is. And they don't have the copyright to marriage. It is only the one who has the copyright that has the authority to determine how it runs. Yeah. Hallelujah. And every equipment you don't run according to how it is meant to be run, it begins to malfunction. It begins to malfunction. And some of those equipment will actually just shut down because you don't know the sequence to use these things. And this is why we have too many broken homes, too many marriages that before they even start, they are gone. Some of them from the honeymoon already, things are already finished. The reason why it is like that is because we don't first and foremost take time to ask the question, where does marriage, marriage come from and how is it supposed to be run? In fact, I would say that our parents did better than we are doing. You will see our grandfathers and grandmothers, the man will be in Vinduk doing some work, and then from the village, they'll bring this young lady, say she's from a good family, she speaks good, you know, she's well behaved, and they bring her to him, and he's meeting her for the first time as his wife. But they will stay together, they have great grandchildren, they are still together, but the grandchildren are already divorced. Why? It's because our parents knew to act in certain ways. They have been brought up and taught how to conduct themselves in this institution called marriage. So even when they don't know each other, they already know how to play out their roles. You get the point? So when they come in, it doesn't matter who it is. He's my husband. This is how you treat a husband. She's my wife. This is how you treat a wife. And so they succeeded better. But we, because of the light of the gospel, are meant to have the best of marriage because now we have the blueprint of the one who initiated what marriage really is. And so, stage one is supposed to be the stage we enjoy until we grow old. Amen. But because we are in the world, though not of the world, we have to pass through the different stages. Hallelujah. Because we are in the flesh, we have to experience things. However, God's design and God's uh, purpose for us is for us to enjoy stage one until our old age. Hallelujah. By the way, I bring you greetings from my lovely wife. I call her the only sugar in my tea. Hallelujah. My tomato baby. If she came here, you will know. She's just, she's just, she shines. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She is the only mosquito in my mosquito net. When I cast that net, it is the only fish I caught out of that net. <laughs> Hallelujah. And she brings greetings to you. She had to be somewhere, otherwise I would have been here with her. You know, and uh, it's good to be with you lovely people. Amen. Amen. You know. So, definition of marriage. Marriage is a union between a man and a woman for the fulfillment of God's mandate on earth. Marriage is the union between a man and a woman for the fulfillment of God's mandate on earth. Unless we understand what marriage is all about, we will think it is just for us to have fun. The singles are praying for the day they will get married because they think that when they get married, it is just fun. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, for this purpose, a man shall leave his father and mother. For this what? So there is a purpose for marriage. Hallelujah. There is a purpose, purpose for marriage. So, biblical marriage is not a contract. I heard Pastor Tony talk about this. It is not a contract. It is a covenant. The secular world treats it as a contract. So we believe when we sign that contract, you know, we are in a contract. It is a covenant. A contract can be terminated. Yes. A contract has expiry date. 
A contract can be broken, but a covenant is for life. Hallelujah. A covenant is for life. And this is why, as a single believer, you must understand that you don't step into this institution unless you are willing to be there for life. Forget about the things that we see in our world today. The world has become so churchy and the church has become so worldly that we don't know the difference anymore. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. So the church is, the world is in the church. And the church is in the world. So even when you are in the church congregation, you are not addressing the church. It is a mixed multitude. Hallelujah. Because when the children of Israel left Egypt, the Bible says there was the rabble that joined them. There were Egyptians that just felt that this Israelite God is very cool. Let's follow them. There were Egyptians that saw the miracles and were attracted to them. So the crowd that left Egypt were not all Jews. There were Egyptians that followed. And when you heard all those murmuring, it always started with the Egyptians. Where would the Jews say, oh, I'm telling you, I wish I missed all those garlic in, in Egypt. The Jews were not really enjoying much. The Bible says the rabble amongst them raised the voice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So because we have a mixed multitude in church, this is why we don't have clarity about things that have to do with the faith. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's very important for us to understand what marriage is. If you read Malachi chapter 2 verse 13 and 14, you will read a lot of scriptures because when I talk, I like to bring you to the foundation of the word of God. The book is our manual. Amen. Uh, by the way, I will give you a story so that we can continue nicely. When I talk about marriage, I talk from uh, part of my experience. Uh, when I asked my wife out, that was sometime in 1991. Amen. I, I spoke to her, you know. I, I first picked interest in this young girl, very wonderful girl, beautiful voice, you know. And uh, it took two years before I asked her out. I prayed for two years old. Two years praying. <laughs> Amen. Never say the word, just interacting. Hallelujah. You know these days you see the girl on Monday, by Wednesday you are dating her. <laughs> Amen. You see, it's because we are not thinking of how far we want to go. If you plant beans, you reap beans and the plant dies. That is a seasonal thing. But if you want to have oranges, it takes time watering and watering the thing is growing is not fruiting until several years later and once you start plucking oranges for a whole generation so you have to learn how to plant your seed well if you want beans you can harvest it if you want corn you harvest it the plant dies this is why you marry the girl by the time you finish what you're looking for the marriage dies amen so it took me two years two years and after two years, anyway, part of the reason why it took two years was when I saw her, she was still rounding up her secondary school, and I told myself, I have made a covenant with God, I will never, secondary school, I will never go into a relationship with anyone in secondary school. Have, marriage is for men. It's not for kids. Amen? It's for men and women. Before, as a Christian, you go into relationship, you, you must know where that relationship is going. You don't do boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah, let's just do it and see where it leads. No, 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 no. No. Hallelujah. When Adam saw, he said, now this is the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. Are you getting the point? So Christians, we don't do boyfriend, girlfriend just to see where it leads. No. You pray first. You listen to God. You check yourself and you are sure of where you want to go with this person. Amen? Amen. So, Two years later, she was in the university, and then that was when I asked her out. Now, the day I asked her out, and she said yes to me, I said, let's meet tomorrow. The following day, we fixed, I said, let's meet at the chapel, <laughs> you know, at the church. And the following day, I came with a huge Bible. I looked at the Bible I could get, the most intimidating one, I came with it. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1991. And when I came, I placed that Bible there. And I said to her, 
Do you agree that this book will serve as the constitution of this relationship? She said yes. So would you agree that any time we argue between us, we will allow this book to settle our quarrels? She said yes. I said even if I am the head, if this book says I am wrong, I will apologize to you. Even if you are the queen, if this book says you are wrong, you will apologize to me. She said yes. We started. From 1991, every Wednesday, my wife and I are fasting. Every Wednesday, you know. And this was the principle. You see, every building, every house is built on a foundation. Every house is built on a foundation. But we have homes that are not built on any foundation. Living in houses that are built with foundation. This is why the homes break and the house is standing. The house is supposed to be the physical illustration of what spiritually our home is supposed to be. But the illustration will outlive the real thing. You know, scripture is full of types and shadows. A type is an illustration. It's like a parable. But the parable is meant to reflect the real thing. Our home is supposed to be the real thing. That building is supposed to be the illustration. But unfortunately, our homes don't last. And the buildings will last. So it means that our homes are not built on the right foundations. Somebody say the importance of foundation. The importance of foundation. Whether you are married, it is not too late to go back and check what foundation you are building. Amen. 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 It is not too late. Six years into our relationship, a lot of times when things happen, my wife will say, look, if we are going to break, let's break this thing. I'm tired of your problem. I got to a point, I called her and sat her down and said, Listen, let me ask you a question. Do you want to marry me? She said, yes. I said, I want to marry you. Are you sure? I said, yes. From today, nobody between me and you should ever talk about separation again. <laughs> Are you getting the point? No, that word separation should never come out of our mouth from today. If we are going to fight, let's have a good fight. But that foundation, nobody touches it. Are you getting what I'm saying? So if we kill ourselves, we kill ourselves in this house. But this foundation, nobody is going out. Yeah. Are you getting the point? So we threw out the key. There was no way out. So we have to make it work. Amen. And that was how our relationship stood. But let me tell you the truth. It's not without challenges. Jesus said anyone that builds his house on the rock, when the storm comes, because it will surely come. It didn't say if the storm comes. I get what I'm saying. It didn't say if. So when the storm comes, that house will still be standing. So the problem is that we don't prepare for the storm. We don't prepare for the storm. The storm will come and it will hit on every home. You will look at this fine, 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 fine girl that you fell in love with and ask yourself, who are you? Where did you what did you do with her? Because you are seeing something different. Absolutely. You look at this man, you say, this is not the man I married. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it's still the man. Why? The storm has come. Amen? This is why it's important for us what kind of foundation we have. If you have a foundation that will last, it will take you through life. Amen? So when you are coming into issues of marriage, know that it is for life. So we dated for 12 years. And then we got married in 2003, making it the 19th year now that we've been married. Second thing, hallelujah. Second thing, how that foundation helped us. It helped us to have a principle of dealing with our issues. Amen. 12 plus 19. Arithmetic, how many years is that? 19 plus 12. 31. 31, eh? 31. For 31 years, we've never had one uncle or one senior friend or one pastor come and sit with us and say, what is happening to, to fix problems between us? For 31 years, we've never had a third party come to settle anything. Why? Because we went to the source. Are you getting what I'm saying? We went to the source. We deal with our issues, we deal with our issues from the foundation, which is the word of God. Amen. 
And I'm telling I'm the happiest person. I mean, I am in my 50s. The, why, the reason why I look like this is because I married the love of my life. Amen. I'm enjoying my marriage. Wow. I am enjoying myself. Amen. Hallelujah. The second thing is that we both are in the same ministry. So we travel together, we sing together, we do outreaches together, we do our mini crusades together. And my team, if you are in a relationship, you join my team, your, your spouse must join our team. It is part of the condition. You come in with your wife. Yeah. So if we are traveling, you are going with your wife. Yeah. We don't want one ton eyes. Uh -huh. Amen. <laughs> we don't want distractions. You have your wife here. So you don't have any reason to be going out for phone calls. She's here. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we kept it going. And God has helped us. It is by the mercy of God. Hallelujah. But do your due diligence. And God will keep you. Hallelujah. Amen. God will sustain you. Oh, yes. Amen. So, a biblical marriage is not a contract. It is what? It is a covenant. It is a covenant. Number two, it is not a business arrangement. It is a divine agreement. It is not a business arrangement. It is a divine agreement. Amos chapter 3 verse 3 says, Shall two work together except they be agreed? Hallelujah. Marriage is a divine agreement. Number three, it is not joined by man. So no man has the authority to break it. Hallelujah. Even if that church says, I pronounce it broken, uh -huh. then the spiritual God still sees you together. Sees you together. Yes. I get what I'm saying. We read the word of God as if it is not the Bible we are reading. The Bible says, no man, mm. no man, born of a woman, should put us under. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying, people Hallelujah. of God? This is the word of God. If we are reading the word of God, we must read it with our eyes open, with this simple understanding. If say oh, no man, what does it mean? No man. No man. If God says no man, then it means no man. Hallelujah. Amen. This is why you must be sure before you step in there. One of the biggest problems we have is young men, you know, dropping babies all around and leaving women. Amen. I think the church will need to do something. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. She's pregnant. We take her, we bundle her to your house and leave her there. You must take care of your problem. Yes, if we do that, young men will take, will begin to learn to be disciplined. In my place, she's pregnant. In, at night, mama, they will bring her to your house and leave her with your father and mother. Say, this is your property. Yeah. Your family will go. Yeah. If you like, say she's not your wife now, she will be eating food in your father's house yeah. until you acknowledge her. Amen. Amen. That's right. When you visit her in the night, you didn't know that you don't like her. Yeah. Now you realize you don't like her. Yeah. Oh, you, now you can see that she's too big. Yeah. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. A Christian goes into marriage for life. So the Bible says, no man shall put asunder. Amen. Amen. Matthew 19 verse 6. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Hallelujah. Let no man challenge God. Amen. Let no man challenge God. Hallelujah. Amen. What God has joined together, let no man. Amen. Amen. Marriage is not based on feelings. It is based on a purpose. Hallelujah. It is not based on feelings. Feelings are the spices. Okay, that help us to enjoy marriage. But they are not the foundation. You cannot build anything on feeling. You can leave your house. Some of you, you left your house, you are happy. By the time you are entering this place, you are already sad. You just need to remember something that happened yesterday. And all of a sudden, you are sad. How can you build your relationship on that? How can you base your marriage on that? I don't have fallen out of love. Who told you, oh, anything you fall into is an accident? You must not enter a relationship by accident. <laughs> if you say I fell in love, it means it was an accident I found myself here. You must open your eyes and walk with your eyes open. No accident in the child in the, for the children of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't enter a relationship by accident. Oh, she was just looking so nice that day. And I just I didn't know when I no, 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 no. Hallelujah. The Bible says, watch and pray. Amen. So we don't fall in love. 
marriage is not built on feelings. It is not built on emotions. It is built on purpose and the word of God. Hallelujah. This is why our God is not a God of emotion. You are praying for something, you just go and cry and cry and cry and cry and say nothing. God will be looking at you and wondering what is wrong with you. Until you speak his word to him, he doesn't respond to emotion. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. God does not be, ah, no, 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 no. He responds only to his word. Hallelujah. It is written. God responds to it, it is written. Yeah. He does not get respond to emotion. You cannot blackmail God into action. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Better study to show yourself approved. As a child of God, if you go to God, you must go as a legal person. This is what the scripture says about my situation, Father. Therefore, based on this word, I am asking for this. That is what the Bible says, petition in God. Hallelujah. Marriage is not by emotion. Emotion is just something to spice up our relationship. But it is not meant for it to build on that. So don't tell me you don't love her because love is not a feeling, it's a commitment. Amen. Amen. When Jesus was on the cross, was it nice? Was it, somebody answer me, was it nice? No. Ha -ha. But that was love. When the Bible says love, when you think about receiving love, you smile. But when you think about giving love, you will know that love is not an easy thing to do. <laughs> you wake up in the middle of the night because your neighbor's child is sick. That is love. I get what I'm saying, but you deprive yourself of sleep, and then you go, oh, you help this child. Now for the parents of that child, they are receiving something pleasant, but it costs you something. Amen. So love is not something, if you don't think of love at the side of receiving it, think of love at the side of giving it. Amen. The Bible says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. The Bible never said in any place, oh, you must be loved. Did you hear that? No, it says you, love. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we together? Amen. Hallelujah. Don't mind me, sometimes I switch to preaching mode. It's supposed to be a teaching mode. Hallelujah. Amen. So it is not based, marriage, Christian marriage is not based on emotion. It is based on purpose. It is based on the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Genesis 2.24, the Bible says, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. For this reason, what reason? You will find the reason in uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. So the Lord God took the man he had made and settled him in the garden of Eden to cultivate it. To cultivate it. And then verse 18 of that Genesis chapter 2. Now the Lord God said, It is not good or beneficial for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper, one who balances him, a counterpart who is suitable and complementary to him. Amen? So can you see the reason when he said for this reason? You know what? God created a, 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 a garden. He put man on the garden to walk on the garden. Then God said, it is not good for him to do this alone. I'm going to bring him somebody to help him. Now, if I'm coming to help you, I must be either as strong as you are. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. Or at least I must have value to add to what you're doing. Amen. Isn't it? This is why your wife is by your side, not under your feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is why your wife is by your side, not under your feet. Because she's there to help you. Somebody who qualifies to help me must be very valuable. Somebody who qualifies to help me. Ah, you know women. God created women and put too much on women. This is why a man is a one-track guy. Women can multitask. I get what I'm saying. She's cooking. She's watching Telemundo. You, you, you get what I'm saying? And then she's watching the baby here. And then she's doing five things at the same time. A man cannot afford to do that. If a man wants to watch TV, he is there. Anything that passes in front of him, he will kick that thing out of the way. That is a man. A man is a man of vision, purpose, one mind. But a woman can do so many things. Hallelujah. That is why women don't birth them. Everything a man needs, he put it in woman. To humble the man. Hallelujah. So the man can to hold, do you know? A man can be the head of the woman is the neck. 
I get what I'm saying. It is only out there that men are, they act like men. Come to the house, you will know that the woman, the neck is what turns the head. Wherever the neck wants the head to go, the head will go that direction. Women are very powerful. Amen. Hallelujah. Women, God created women very, very sophisticated. That's why he made man from earth and made woman from refined products. Already refined product he used to make a woman. That's why they are delicate. That's why they are so beautiful. That's why everything about women, you know, sometimes we can't understand men. <laughs> man of God. Ah, I put on my shoes, I'm fine. Before you go out, the woman is calling you back. Hey, no, no, no. See, your color is still like this. The man doesn't care about those things. Because a woman is delicate. This is why I tell women, you can't wear anything and come to church and say, no, it was a mistake. No. A woman will think about what she wear tomorrow, the day before. Yeah. When it comes to what they put on, they are very particular. The hairstyle, the way they will appear, a woman puts everything into that. So when a woman comes dressed carelessly, don't tell me that you didn't know that that thing you are wearing, that is showing something. You knew. You planned it. I get what I'm saying. Women are very delicate. They don't do things anyhow. They plan. Because God made women so refined. Can you see that if was able to actually get Adam. Adam, it was you and God before this woman came home. She was able to come between him and God. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's how powerful a woman is. She was able to come between, it was only him and God that had fellowship before she came. But now, the woman came. That's why all your friends, you can't understand them again. <laughs> they are married. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They are married. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So for this purpose, so God brings a wife into the life of a man for a reason. He brings you to better the life of that man. He brings you to help that man. Hallelujah. So marriage is for a purpose. Amen. So marriage is a kind of a ministry. Marriage is a kind of a ministry. This is the reason why before I became a pastor, the first requirement is he must be a husband of one wife. The Bible says he must be one who takes care of his home. He must be one whose children are well behaved before he can be a bishop. So it means that marriage is a prerequisite to ministry. Amen. This is why we cannot handle marriage lightly. Your home Mr. Deacon, your home is more important than that deaconship. Amen? Amen. Are, we, are we together? Amen. It's more important. That's why I tell pastors, when you have problems at home, you can take leave just to go and sort out that. Don't say, that woman don't understand the things of God and just go, no, 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 no. The Bible says so that your prayers cannot be hindered. How you deal with your wife will determine whether your prayers go to heaven or they go to the dustbin. I get what I'm saying. So it's very important. So marriage is very, very important. It's a foundation even for ministry. So marriage is a ministry of its own. God entrusts you to build a home. He entrusts you to raise godly offspring. He entrusts you to be, if our homes are good, the nation is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is why for us to change this nation, we must start by making sure that our homes are okay. The children that go to school must come from a good home for them to do well in school. Those people in parliament, if some of them came from good homes, they will not be doing the things they are doing today. If some of them were taught when they were kids, don't take things that don't belong to you. We will not be talking about fish not today. Oh, no, no, no. no we don't. You don't know the power God put in the church and that power rests in the home. A nation can be transformed because of the church and because oh, yes. of the home. If our children were taught the difference between good and evil, yes. if they were taught that it is not smart for you to take your fellow classmates' pencil and go and use it for the test while he's looking for his own, if they were taught that that textbook you have, the school gave you, it is not your own, it is somebody's own, don't go and give it and pretend that it was the one given to you because somebody is crying because of it. If we taught our children like that, there will be better parliamentaries, there will be better governors, 
there will be better presidents, there will be better leaders. But because that foundation is lacking, some of us were too busy to pay attention to the kids. So they grew up to become whatever they learn from their environment. Hallelujah. So it's very important our homes. The church must pay attention to the homes because the home is the foundation of everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to Jesus. So I will share with you a few principles that I brought. I will do quick, quick, sharp, 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 and finish. Ten principles. You know, I know there are other things that we share with my other brethren. We have to come together to talk together so that whatever we are giving today, it will come out of a platform of unity in the spirit. Amen. Amen. This is what we're doing. It is not anybody's show. It is God's show to build us. Hallelujah. And so, ten principles. Ten principles. Now there is a saying, God does not run the earth on miracles. He runs the earth on principles. Amen. He doesn't run our lives on miracles. He runs on principles. That's why you didn't wake up and say, Father, where is food? You went to school. It's a principle. Hallelujah. Those who went to school and did, they are somewhere. Those who felt that it was not necessary, they are also somewhere. Yeah. There are principles that we, that we follow to make us relevant in life. And those are God's principles. Amen. So God does not run the earth on miracles. He runs them on principles. When we need miracles, God comes through. Can you see that most of the miracles Jesus did were cases that were almost done? A blind man, there is no hope to see again. Jesus will open the eye. A crippled man, there is no hope to walk again. Jesus will take care of him. But when you have fever, the only time he healed fever was when he wanted Peter's mother to cook food for them. He said, fever, go. Let that come and cook for us. Amen. That's, but he didn't waste his time with fever. Didn't, Jesus did not waste his time on headache. Hallelujah. Yo, Jesus made sure that the things that he did were things that were cases that man could not do anything about. Hallelujah. So he runs the earth on principles. So we must not ignore principles. Hallelujah. Number one, lay a foundation of Christ and his word. Lay a foundation of Christ and his word. I shared with you my story. It worked for me. If you've not done it, go back home and decide. And say, honey, can we from today decide that the word of God will lead us in this house? Do you know that it takes a lot of responsibility off our shoulders? I tell the simples, don't marry a man who does not submit to anything. It's a loose cannon. It's a loose cannon. A man that does not have another man that he respects, he will not respect you. A man that does not respect God. The Bible says, God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of the man. Man is the head of the woman. If that man is not submitted to Christ, no, no, because he has violated God's order. The only thing that qualified Christ, he said, whatever I see my father do, that is what I do. Oh, yeah. Jesus submitted to the father. Yeah. He never did his own thing. That was what gave him the guarantee to be the head of the church. The Bible says he came down and humbled himself even to death on the cross. And therefore, therefore means because of that which he did, the Bible says he has been given a name. That is high above every name. Amen. He did not qualify for that name until he humbled himself to the Father. Amen. So a man that cannot humble himself to Christ does not qualify to say, I am the head here. You must do what I want to do. Amen. What gives a man authority is submission to authority. Amen. When Jesus was doing miracles, they said, where did you get this authority from? Because no man operates without authority. Every man must subject himself to an authority in order to get authority to execute. I get what I'm saying. So it's important to understand that a man must submit to Christ for you to wholeheartedly submit to him. Ah. This is why when you are choosing men to marry, forget okay, when you see those boys, whatever you say, you do this, they jump. It is after you marry them, you will see the monster. It is not submitted to Christ. Don't follow him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If we have, do we have singles in the house? <laughs> Let me be looking this way. Because these ones have jumped that already. Don't ever say yes to a man who is not serious with Christ. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. It says, what fellowship is there with light and darkness? Listen to me. If you marry the devil's son, 
the devil becomes your father-in-law and he has a legal right to come into your home and do whatever he wants to do in your house. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Same, vice versa. If you marry the devil's daughter, you have given him legal authority to come into your home. Because anyone who is not born again is not born of God. So he's born of who? Oh. <laughs> we only have devil and God. So if he's not born of God, whose son is he? <laughs> if he's not a child of light, a child of what is he? <laughs> so if you marry Satan's son, don't come tomorrow and make us, you, you become a prayer point. <laughs> there are some prayer points that we are supposed to take care of a long time ago. So do due diligence. Don't marry any man who is not a child of God. Amen. Even if he says, I'm born again, and he's not living, he doesn't have a church where he goes, he doesn't have a pastor where he submits to receive, you know, instruction. God says, I deal with you as sons when I rebuke you. Amen. He says, which kind of a son is it that a father cannot rebuke? A son that a father cannot rebuke is a vagabond. God himself says this, that if, if he can rebuke us, that makes us that. We are his children, and that is his own way of demonstrating love. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So anybody that does not have anybody, the pastor says something, say, don't forget about that man. Who, who, is, who does he think he is? He's just a mere man. No, 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 no. That one, that one, he is dealing with a man that God has put in his life to be a channel of guidance. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you dishonor, you are dishonoring God. Now, can you see somebody come, uh, the ambassador, they are maybe your ambassador drinks, okay? Then he comes, he's drunk, and then you slap the ambassador. Do you know what will happen? It is a whole country that will come after you. Yeah. Even if that man is a drunk. Oh, the ambassador of China comes, he does something, and then you just go and slap him. Because you think that there are small people, you can beat him. China will come for you. Namibia will answer. I get what I'm saying. Namibia will answer. Amen. Amen. Yes. So it's very important. This is why if God places somebody in your life, that person is an ambassador of God. Amen. When you fight that one, God will fight him. Amen. Let me digress a bit. Do you know why God had to deal with Miriam and, uh, and Aaron? Amen. Miriam was the one that took baby Moses eh, and put him in there. Miriam was the one that followed the basket. She was the one that took care of baby and nursed him. She was his nanny. But she didn't have a right. Why? Because he was acting in a place where God put him. I get what I'm saying. So a man that does not have anybody that he respects, that man is a problem. Yes. Same thing with women. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. I know it may be like this uh, digression, but this is a very important thing. One of the ways you know who to follow is somebody who is following something. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Now, this is why the Bible says in Psalm 127 verse 1, Unless the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain will build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman keeps away in vain. Amen. And this is also the reason why you must choose who to submit to. Don't just go to any church. I tell you, don't go to a church where where you don't know what is happening there because if you go to a place and you have a pastor who is submitted to Christ his authority will be the best like heaven to you Amen. I get what I'm saying oh, the same yes. order the same order God is the head of Christ Christ is the head of the man man is the head of the woman the same order your pastor must also submit to that order Amen. hallelujah Amen. so when you choose a man you are choosing somebody you will submit to so you have to be careful who you choose. Hallelujah. Principle number two, the principle of love and respect. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 33. However, each man among you, without exception, is to love his wife as his very own self, with behavior worthy of respect and esteem, always seeking the best for her, with an attitude of loving kindness. That is with a behavior worthy of respect. You can't just say I'm the head of the house and just behave anyhow with a behavior worthy of respect. Amen? And then he continues to say, and the wife must see to it that she respects and delights in her husband, that she notices him and prefers him and treats him with loving concern, treasuring him, honoring him, and holding him dear. 
you must be one that is always full of praises for your spouse. If there is no fan, you must be the only fan for your spouse. Amen. Amen. You must be the only, you must be the number one person that praises your husband. Vice versa. Now, man, the Bible says, man, love your wife. Wife, submit to man. Amen. Because the language of love between men and women is different. A man will interpret respect as love. Amen. Yeah. When a man says, God, this woman loves me, it, check and see, she respects me. <laughs> in the man's brain, that is what love is. Yeah. In man's dictionary. Amen. And then in a woman's dictionary, care, care, attention, that is what respect, that is what love, that is what a woman interprets love. You cannot say, I love you. You see, they have the story that the man, the, the man said, I love you, I'll go to the moon. Oh, you go to the moon, he ran to the moon and came back. Oh, he came back, he ran to cross, across seven oceans and came back. By the time he finished and came, the woman said, you don't love me. He said, ah, but I've been crossing this for you. He said, but you are not, you are not with me any time. I can't find you. <laughs> you don't make time for me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. For the man, of, to him, this is love. I am going to win bread. <laughs> Hallelujah. So a woman understands love by the attention you pay to her. She's been wearing that shoe for two months. You've never even noticed it. When you go, did you buy a new shoe? It has been here for two months. I've been waiting for you to notice it. You've not yes. it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. A woman knows you love her when you notice little things. Pay attention to your woman. Show her that you care. Show her that she means something to you. And then be proud of her before people. You know, some of us, we, 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 we will introduce everybody, most of us, especially us, man of God. Yeah. They will forget the wife. Show the world that this is your best. Hallelujah. A woman understands love by the way you care. A man understands love by the way you respect him. Now, for you to be able to get love from the woman, you understand? For you to be able to get her to, to respect you, rather, for a man. For you to get her to respect you, you will love her. Anytime you feel she's not respecting me, start loving her. And anytime you feel this man doesn't love me, start showing him respect. Show him respect. Hallelujah. You will see he will begin, he will, he will not think, he will become like a teddy bear. You can tickle him. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's true. And then when you show your wife so much love, I'm telling you all her pink numbers, you will have them. <laughs> <laughs> you have access to everything, every that which was keeping from you because she was angry. All of a sudden, um, last month I, I didn't tell you what happened. Eh? It's because you began to show her that you love her. Mm -hmm. And God is the creator of all this. That's why He gives us the key. I get what I'm saying. If God says do this, do it. Though. That's the secret of love, of joy in your home. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God started this whole thing, so He knows the key to it. The key to a man's heart is to honor and respect him. The key to a woman's heart is to show her love and care and concern and tenderness. Hallelujah. So the principle of love. The principle of love. Hallelujah. So it does not matter what the secular world says, it is God's design. Number three, the principle of honor. Hallelujah. The principle of honor. We must honor each other. Honor each other. For this 31 years that I've been with my wife, I've never said to her, you stupid woman. She has never to say, said to me, you stupid man. No, no abusive word, one word has never gone to the two of us. I get what I'm saying. Some of us, when we are angry, we forget who we are. We allow that anger to just come through and we say any and everything and you cannot take it back. You can say sorry, but those words are still there. Hallelujah. You can be as angry and we get angry. <laughs> we get angry. Yeah. Praise the Lord. But we, we never, never use abusive words. Hallelujah. Amen. It's important to know that you can make those, you can express your, 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 your displeasure without being good, without dishonoring this woman. Because she's you. I remember when I was a child, I learned a lesson. I think I was either four years old. You know, I, remember, I still remember even something that happened when I was two. I remember 
I don't know how God did it, but I remember something that happened when I was two years old. I was four years old. And then if you say to somebody, you know, if you do this, it means you are, it's like a, you are cursing somebody, you know. I don't know if you do it here. Like for children in my place, if they do this, you are just like your father. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it's a, a, you know, so when you see a child do this to you, yeah. that, is, that is a curse. Yeah. Now, we were hindered from doing that to others. If you do it, they'll beat you. So one day, at four, I decided I said, I, mean, I can do it to myself. Nobody will care. So I stood in front of the mirror. You stupid boy. You, you look at your head. I was there. The next thing, I just heard this place. It was like fire. Pow! And I was very confused. No, sincerely, I was confused. I didn't do it to you. Why will you beat me when I'm doing it to me? I didn't do it to anybody. <laughs> I didn't get what I'm saying. But I learned a lesson that day. That you cannot abuse even yourself. Because you did not create yourself. And if you cannot abuse yourself, you cannot abuse the woman who is part of your life. Or the man who is part of your life. Are you hearing the people of God? This is who we are. This is our culture as people of God. You must understand that when you get born again, you are first a Christian before you are Oshuwambo. You are first a Christian before you are Oshuwambo. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are first a believer. This is the reason why part of the culture that does not go contrary to the word of God, we embrace. But the part of the culture that goes contrary to the word of God, we do what? We take it out of the way. Anything that will not honor. This is why the Bible says, the Bible says, honor your father and mother. Isn't it? But it says, obey your parents in the Lord. So honor, they don't need to be good people for you to honor them. They don't need, your father does not need to be born again for you to honor. I tell people in my church, I say, if, if, if you go home and I hear any complaint for your parents, that they needed something you did not send home, you will answer to me. Sometimes when the parents visit us, I'll say, Mama, if, if, if they are not taking care of you, report them to us. Oh no, your parents just need to be your parents to deserve honor. Period. Amen? But to obey them, if they say, go to this and go on for them to wash you, you say, Mama, I'm sorry, but it is against my faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't say, no, I will go, let them do what they are going to do, it doesn't matter, no. That is not honor. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's important to know that we honor our parents. We give them all the love, everything, but we don't follow them to the shrine. Amen. Amen. Why? Because I am first a believer before I am. I come from heaven before I come from heaven. The Bible says we are foreigners. Do you know we are all foreigners? All of us. So we, are, we, are in a, we are in a foreign land. The world is a foreign place for us. We are all foreigners. We are sojourning on earth. Someday we will go back where we have citizenship. That is heaven. Amen. Our citizenship is in heaven. Every born again child of God, our citizenship is in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's important for us to understand the principle of honor. That we honor one another. You honor your wife, she honors you. You don't treat her like trash because you feel that at the head. It is not possible. Hallelujah. You are dishonoring yourself when you do that. First Peter chapter 3 verse 7.